Hello friends, in this video we'll be taking a look at the DNA results, autosomal DNA, predicted phenotype, traits and even GED match results of an Iranian hunter-gatherer from the Mesolithic belt cave in Iran. Uh, now this individual was a male, his Y DNA is J2A, his mitochondrial lineage is K2A. Uh, if you, in case you want to know where exactly this individual is from, uh, there is a coordinates for Google Maps. That's where he is from. This looks like, I don't know any provinces, but this looks close to Tigiran, which is the capital of um, Iran. Alright, is Tigiran the capital of Iran? I don't know, I think it is. It's gotta be. Yeah, it's, it's gotta be. But it's pretty close to Tigiran. Alright, now let's go ahead and look at what this individual scores with my trade predictor tool. So for Nashakot, uh, the score is like this. This individual has got light brown color eyes, uh, black hair, and intermediate or olive skin. But there is also a pretty high percentage likelihood of dark or brown skin as well. So it's kind of uh, definitely not fair skin at all. They're definitely quite on the darker side of skin tone. Uh, for hair color, also very, very much black hair. The likelihood of brown hair even is pretty low in my opinion. For eye color, seems to be pretty conclusively light brown. Um, hazel is a nah. I wouldn't say it's that likely. It's not that. It's not all that likely to be honest. Most likely, this individual has some kind of brown eye color. Uh, now let's go ahead and look at um, phenotype. Phenotype is in peace. So this individual does not have blue eye haplotype too. Okay. However, they have a heterozygous genotype in this variation, which is once. A, it's a pretty important variation. It does play a big role uh, in determining eye color. So. Uh, having light allele here is typically um, predictive of light allele here, but in this case, obviously, that's not the case. You see this individual has no blue eye haplotype too. Uh, however, CT in this variation. So this did contribute to them scoring light brown eyes, for example, instead of instead of dark brown. However, it did not really, it, it was not enough to give them a non-black hair color. All right, now let's move on to Polygenic risk scores for this individual. Um, for the polygenic risk scores, this individual has got low, uh, significantly below average score for schizophrenia. Looks like a above average score for type 2 diabetes, and looks like a above average score for Alzheimer's as well. For breast cancer, this individual somehow has three disc variants out of six, which is really impressive, uh, in a bad way because it's really, you know, it's it's, it's bad. You don't want to see that. For testicular cancer, risk t three risk variants out of ten, which is actually kind of low. Um, well, not that low, but it's it's still kind of in the average range. But the breast cancer is quite atypical. We're gonna find out why it is. You you're not supposed to get three out of six for breast cancer. You're not supposed to get half of the variants uh, to be risk variant. That's that doesn't happen normally. So we're gonna find out why this occurred. All right. So for uh, variation, this individual has got Valval genotype, Warrior genotype, uh, and intermediate genotype between Warrior and Warrior in MAOA. So overall, this individual is probably uh, a little bit closer to Warrior than to Warrior. So a little bit uh, quicker breakdown of dopamine, a little bit uh, less dopamine accumulation in the system. For DRD2, it looks like this individual has got um, heterozygous genotype in the no-go learner variation and heterozygous genotype in the variation that's linked to the no-go learner variation. Uh, is there anything else interesting here in DRD2? Um, no, not really. I don't really see anything else here. For 5-HTTLPR, this individual has got short form 5-HTTLPR, just like most people. Most people, aside from, well, actually no, most people worldwide have short form 5-HTTLPR, but in Europeans, it's pretty common to see long form 5-HTTLPR as well, and some Europeans have this genotype which uh, protects them from depression a little bit and improves the uh, communication between serotonin uh, pathways. Alright, so this individual does not carry the European lactose persistence mutation. So what I was talking about really is that he doesn't have the European long, long form 5-HTTLPR, he's just the average person. Uh, and not doesn't have the rare European variant that uh, gives or is predictive of long form 5 HTCLPR. For diabetes, this individual does not have type 1 diabetes, good for him. For hemochromatosis, 
It looks like he does not carry any risk variance for hemochromatosis. For Alzheimer's, one APOE to allele. So I think the score for Alzheimer's was pretty high because of this. Uh, this individual has an APOE to allele and APOE. So there's, he's got risk variance in APOE, uh, which is by far the most important uh, gene when it comes to Alzheimer's. So keep that in mind, slightly high score for Alzheimer's because of this. For myopia, um, nothing too interesting. No micro P, good for him. Slightly increased cranial size and 1% higher IQ, good for him. 8 points higher IQ than individuals with a genotype. Alright. Uh, better performing muscles, likely sprinter rather than endurance athlete. Alright. And when it comes to EZAR, it looks like this individual has a genotype that's very atypical for East Asians. Definitely doesn't have East Asian EZAR. Uh, probably doesn't have East Asian facial traits either because uh, why, why should he? Um, and nothing in genotype here. For breast cancer, he's got one risk variant here and he's got one risk variant for two risk variants in this variation of BRCA2. And I think um, I think this is a this is one of the variations where risk variants are uncommon. So that's kind of interesting. Um, a genotype here, three times increased testicular cancer risk for men. All right. Well, okay, that's um, that's all there is for this individual. Now we're gonna go ahead and look at their. F this is what this individual is scoring in Eurogenes K13. Uh, this looks like a result that's kind of atypical for any modern Iranian. Um, what, what, what I don't understand is how there is North Atlantic here in this result. Uh, what I also don't understand is how there is... Well, I guess I understand East Mediterranean, but I don't, I don't get how there is Baltic and North Atlantic in this result. It looks like they're the result of somebody with uh, a little bit of step admixture, right? And there is no way that this individual in the Mesolithic had any step admixture. So we're going to go ahead and check what they score with uh, pun DNA calculators. Hey, you know what? It looks like this individual indeed just straight up has 15% European hunter-gatherer admixture, which is crazy because I don't have any clue how European hunter-gatherer admixture could be present in somebody from this location in the Mesolithic. I just don't see how that's possible. Uh, the biggest component here is Caucasus hunter-gatherers. There is a little bit of affinities to Anatolian Neolithic farmers. There is uh, a little bit of affinity to South Asians as well. Uh, let's check the Oracle. And it's closest to Afghan Pashtuns and Chechens and Lesgians and Pamiri Tajiks, right? So and all of these all of these populations are pretty high distance. And it's actually getting modeled as a mixture of Afghan Pashtun plus Lesgian, uh, closest but it's still not really all that close. So basically, it looks like a mixture of some kind of uh, Dagestan or northern, northeastern Caucasian, like Chechen or Lesgin, uh, Lesgin from Dagestan, Chechen from Chechnya, plus Pashtun or like Makrani, some kind of South Central Asian. All right, that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, you know, you can drop your what you think, where you think this individual got their European hunter-gatherer admixture from. You can drop your suggestions in the comments. You can download this file in 23 and me format from the link which is in the description of the video. And uh, thanks for watching. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy my content. Goodbye.